Hi, I'm Dave Wolf, and welcome back to the Firehouse. We're here today to discuss the proper application of the emergency product removal device. This device is often used to unload MC-307s and DOT-407s through their cleanout caps once they've rolled over on their side. As you can see, this valve right now is in the, clear, uh, the, the completely assembled position. This is the way it is often stored on a unit. However, prior to going into make application, certain parts of this valve need to be taken apart and it needs to be taken into pieces to, in order to do a proper application. As you can see, I've disassembled this emergency product removal device and currently this is the shape that we would want to take it into the hot zone itself. Uh, this will allow us to do proper application and inspection. Once we get this in there, we'll actually do further disassembly, but for ease of purpose right now, we're going to take it down to this level and take it into the hot zone. For purposes of application of the emergency product removal device, you need to envision a 307 or a 407 cargo tank rolled over on its side, and keep in mind, it probably won't be level. One side will usually be higher than the other, which means currently you may have as many as two to three cleanout collars that are under the liquid level at that given point. If your tank is laying at a level like this, you literally naturally, in order to get the most product out of the tank, want to go for the cleanout collar that is at the lowest end. That is going to be your best opportunity opportunity to remove as much product as possible prior to uprighting the tanker. Once we've determined which cleanout collar that we in fact or want to apply the emergency product removal device to, what we want to be able to do here is inspect that cleanout collar. Some of these can be longer than others, some of them will be shorter. The shorter ones are going to make applying the emergency product removal device a lot more difficult. In addition, sometimes these are recessed in catwalks where in fact we'll have to remove the catwalk before we can get application of this. But once we've selected the proper one, one thing that's good to do is to always take a spanner wrench and just loosen this cap up a little bit just to make sure it's not been cross-threaded or beat on there because we don't want to put a lot of tension on the emergency product removal device once we start to apply it. The first part of the emergency product removal device that you're going to need to apply onto the cleanout collar, in fact, is going to be this Viton gasket. This is Viton. The emergency product removal device is made out of stainless steel. The product must be compatible with both. In order to determine whether it's compatible or not, feel free to contact the shipper. He should be able to give you that information. Viton, when it is brand new, and these will be brand new, these are pretty much one-use items. Uh, it's very, especially when it's cold, can be very tough, but you will have the ability to put it on here nonetheless. Usually what I suggest to people is start, and you always want the hat section facing towards the cargo tank itself. Start with the large lug down here, take it around the security tab, and then pull up on it to get it around the last big lug. And then pull the Viton gasket around the rest of it. Once you have it on there, you can manipulate it a little bit. And as you can see, it went on. If it folds up underneath itself, usually by rotating this back and forth and pushing it around, we'll flatten it right out. In order to position this thing correctly, usually what I suggest to people to do is to take their thumb and just leave a, a, a sideways thumb space between the cleanout cap itself and the gasket. This is very important and you'll see why once we start applying the valve itself. The next part of the assembly process is to apply these two halves to around the back side of the Viton gasket. As you can see, I have one half hanging here right here that has no screws protruding out of it so I can turn this upside down. This side actually has some screws hanging to it. So when you have this in there, you need to be mindful of this. If you turn it upside down, those screws will fall out. However, when you go to put this together, they marry up quite, not, quite nicely. And it's usually not, in fact, that difficult because you have the guidance of the collar itself to get these things to join together properly. Now, these two screws that fit within one each other, their job when you tighten them down on the collar is actually to compress the Viton gasket. However, once those are tightened and you have compressed the Viton gasket, we have to come back to set screws that are actually have the nipples on the outside and you can see the inside of them right here. They have little points on them. We'll tighten those later and when we tighten those down, they cut through the gasket right into the collar and that is fact is what secures the device on the collar. 
once you're at a point of assembling this with these two halves, the important part, is, remember, is that to put the bottom on first. And what you want to do is very gingerly just slide it up in there. It will marry up with the gasket nicely. It will also give you a nice lineup with the top part of the, of the, the uh, half itself. Once you drop it in there, those screws generally nicely marry up. And then it's, the point, it's a point of just taking an Allen wrench and starting to secure them. Don't secure these down all the way. Don't tighten them down all the way. What you want to do is just kind of get them on for right now. We're going to do a little bit of adjusting here in just a moment. And right now, as they're starting to come together, I will stop at a point, again, not getting it too tight, and inspect to make sure that the gasket is nice and flat inside of here. If it's not, I can still push it in with my fingers and to make sure that, in fact, it is nice and even. Once I've established that it is nice and even, it's where exactly where I want it, then what I'll be able to do is tighten this down further. Now, I am using a very short Allen wrench, and that is because the base of this dome leak simulator is flat. Typically, a cargo tank is rounded, so in a lot of cases, what we would be using is a, a larger Allen wrench that has a big T-handle on it so we can torque it down. Once I have the compression screws tightened, what we have to do at that point is go back and, and tighten the set screws. The set screws are counter to one another. There are four of them. If I take two Allen wrenches, and typically you're going to be doing this with two people, we'll put the Allen wrenches into the set screws that are counter to each other. Start tightening them with your partner. When you feel it getting a little tension on it, stop and wait for your partner. At that point, you can tighten these things a little bit further until finally you're snugging them down together. By doing them together and evenly, what you're doing is you're keeping the clean-out collar nice and centered. Once you've done that set, those set, out, set of screws, then come back and tighten up the other screws that are counter one another. There are four in total. And again, working together to tighten them nice and evenly. And again, you want to put full torque on these with your hands to make sure that they're digging into that clean-out collar and they're securing them. This is a, if you do not tighten these set screws, this in fact is where you can have a catastrophic failure with this valve. Once you start the pop, it starts to vibrate, it will fall off unless the set, unless the set screws are set properly and are, are tight. 